Coming up on today's video, we visit two museums showing you the history of the River Kwai Bridge and Deaf Railway. After, we take a thrilling and very cheap train ride all the way to Bangkok. I can tell you now, this was an experience. If you haven't been following along, we are Gio and Bert, a Thai English couple who left our jobs in July for a year of travelling the world. So far, we have been travelling around beautiful Thailand and can't wait to see more of this amazing world. Many people know Thailand for its luscious beaches, tasty street food and inspiring culture, but what a lot of people do not know is that it holds a lot of history relating to the Second World War. Kanchanaburi is only two hours west of Bangkok, and if you're into history, it's definitely worth a visit. It is home to the bridge on the River Kwai and what is known as the Deaf Railway. We spent the day soaking up all the information and learning about this horrific event in history. Our first museum was the Jeff War Museum. Yes, that's what we were thinking, but you heard it right. That's Jeff, not deaf. <laughs> From memory, I think it cost 100 baht for myself and 40 baht for Bert being Thai, which is not bad. There were mixed reviews online about this museum, but we quite liked it. There were a lot of things to look at, some good bits of information, and for the price, we thought it was worth the visit. It is fact, and something the Thais are very proud of, is that Thailand has never been colonised. However, while this is true, Thailand has been occupied by foreign powers. This includes the Japanese when they took charge in 1942 during World War II. While in power, the Japanese decided to build a railway in order to transport cargo to its troops who were fighting in Burma. The railway ran for 250 miles from Ban Pong in Thailand all the way to Burma. The railway was constructed by prisoners of war and Asian slave labourers, taking just over a year to construct from 1942 to 1943 you can only imagine the harsh working conditions these prisoners of war endured. Out of everything we saw in the museum it was clear the most well known is the railway bridge, known as the bridge on the river Kwai. You can walk across the bridge today for free, like what we did in our previous video, which we definitely recommend. There are even sections of the bridge that were destroyed and now displayed in the museums. The importance of the bridge meant that it was a prime target for bombing. Unfortunately, this meant if the prisoners of war weren't injured or dead from the bombing, they had to make the repairs to the damages, therefore prolonging their suffering. The second museum was the Deaf Railway Museum and Research Centre. This was definitely the best and had the most information. It was a bit more expensive at 150 baht each, but 100% worth the price, and it is directly opposite the war cemetery, where thousands of Allied soldiers are buried. It's nice to be able to visit the museum and then walk around the memorial, as it makes the experience that more real and surprisingly emotional. What was it like to work on the Deaf Railway, you may ask? Well, reading some of the information and seeing some horrifying images in these museums, I can assure you the conditions were abominable. The prisoners of war endured inhumane treatment from the Japanese, little food and water, sleep deprivation and long shifts, often 18 hours due to the short time frame to complete the railway. Whilst living in these terrible conditions, they battled with the tropical environment. When monsoon season swept in, it brought all sorts of diseases, from malaria to cholera, that infected almost everyone. Along with the horrific living conditions, malnutrition and extreme weather, the construction itself was exceedingly difficult. Having to cross through thick mosquito-infested jungle and uneven terrain, the prisoners of war's biggest challenge was the deep cuttings in the railway. The longest and deepest cuttings in the railway occurred at Konyu. Unbelievably, and with little equipment, they cut 25 metres deep and 500 metres long through the mountainous section in Konyu. This part of the railway became known as Hellfire Pass because of the harsh working conditions. Today you can visit the Hellfire Pass and there is a memorial and museum to commemorate those who lost their lives in this section. The railway has been named a number of things, but most famously it is known as the Deaf Railway. It has earned its name from the sheer number of lives lost during its construction. On average, a staggering 100,000 people were thought to have died building the 250 miles of railway. It is said that one man died for every sleeper that was laid on the track. After the war, the line was repaired and restored and still runs passenger services today. 
Not all of the line is in service, but the most famous section of the working railway line is the bridge over the River Kwai. People, often tourists, ride it today, perhaps as a memory for those that lost their lives here. We have had such an amazing few days here in Kanchanaburi, but the time has come to move on and we are now headed for Bangkok. We decided to take the local train, which takes under three hours. We love trains, and to say we were excited for this journey was an understatement. Are you ready for the price? Can you believe this train journey only cost us one pound each? Yes, you're hearing that right, one pound. We were amazed too. Despite no AC and wooden seats, we knew we were in for a treat. Uh, we're leaving Kanchanaburi and heading off to Bangkok. Here we go! Freshman's my favourite. What is it? Honey lemon? Honey lemon. Honey lemon and I got a Sprite. amazing so beautiful just to sit there and look out the window and what's nice was all the windows were open so even though it is quite hot you just get such a breeze and there's just so much to look at so the journey took about three hours and for myself it was a hundred baht and for Bert it was 20 baht because he's Thai <laughs> But yeah, an incredible train ride. I would really recommend it. How did you like the journey? Oh, it was, uh, it was really nice because you got to look out the window, but you do feel very sticky. Like I feel really disgusting right now. I just can't <laughs> wait to go uh, and check in a hotel and just have a, have a shower. But do you know what? That was a good experience. All for 20 baht, can't beat it. And now we've got to get all our luggage to our hotel in Sukhumvit. So let's go. Oh God, it's so I want it to again. So once we got to Tonbury station, we had to get a taxi from the station to the hotel, which took us roughly about 45 minutes. And we are here in our hotel now. We are staying at the Quarter Onat in Sukhumvit, and we are staying for seven nights. Quick room tour. Quick room tour. Nice big room. We've got a huge TV. And the bathroom seems pretty nice. Quite standard, but the location, being in Sukhumvit, really close to BTS, and we're only paying 20 pounds per night, which is around 850 baht. <laughs> Thanks so much guys for watching this video and if you enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and to be sure to subscribe for our future videos. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Bye. Look at his hair. What's going on here? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>